deep, but we human beings are complex creatures, and part of what we have is a spirit or a spirituality that uh, we tend to think animals don't have that may, may in fact be unique to humans. How does the spirit or spirituality fit into the more modern uh, model of human medicine? Where does that fit in? Oh, I'm seeing that fitting in in all aspects of medicine these days. Why, in fact, just the other day, I had someone come through the emergency room talking about the No One Dies Alone program, where if someone is about to transition out of their body, that I could call and have someone there just to be with them and sit with them. That spirituality happening in Western medicine. Many of the uh, Oriental medicines have an implied spirituality. Think of it in terms of all of life being created and sustained by one all-pervading energy. Some people might call it the Holy Spirit, God, Allah, Shakti, Prana. There's many different names for it, but if there's one all-pervading energy, the goal of spiritual medicine is to get that energy to move in a way to improve the lot of the person requiring treatment. So I see that uh, applied in numerous ways. There's hands-on healing, there's prayer ceremonies, there's shamanistic traditions where people ingest substances and go on vision quests, both for an ill person and the ill person themselves sometimes will take these vision quests, depending on the nature of the illness and the tradition that it's embedded within. You have to definitely look at the cultural tradition of the individual and the uh, social uh, circumstances that they're in when applying spiritual medicine to people. I do believe, though, that it, the most results, you have to touch on a person's spirituality to get good results in any kind of treatment, be it from something like anxiety and depression, be it from psoriasis, or even digestive disturbances. If the person has tranquil and peacefulness, all symptoms tend to be improved. Good question.